Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In recent episodes, we've been building a variety of tools that will allow us to classify a 16S rRNA gene sequence against a database that we generated uh, a few episodes back now. As we've been building out this new function, I've been doing it within the vignette file to help me kind of think through the flow of data through uh, the new function that we'll call something like classify sequence or something like that. So what I wanna to do today is go ahead and build that function. And then what I'm gonna use is a tool called profviz that will allow us to identify different bottlenecks in that function to see if we can't possibly make it faster. Let's head over to our studio and we'll get going with today's coding. Um, again, here is my vignette script. Um, I'll go ahead and load all this stuff. I'll get library tidyverse going. I'll also go ahead and load the package code as it currently is. We'll get in our RDP taxonomy data and the database uh, information, and we'll get all that going. And then DB here is building our Kamer database. And then we have a few sequences here uh, where I know the classification, or at least I know what they're classified using the same tool, but in a different software package. Um, and then we've got a uh, hundred bootstraps that we'll use for the bootstrap sampling to get a confidence score and our Kamer size of eight. I've got some duplication of code here. You'll see I've got Kamer size equals eight here and here. We'll clean that up later. What I wanna focus on today is this function that I've kind of prototyped in here, but uh, never quite defined, right? And so um, that is going to be these lines of code from 35 down to 44. We'll give it um, our unknown sequence, our database, and it'll spit out then a list object that is our consensus classification across, say, 100 bootstraps um, with a Kamer size of eight um, for that unknown sequence. So I'll come over to our test kamers.r script and come to the end here, and I'll do test that, uh, and we'll say can classify a unknown sequence with a database. Okay, and we'll go ahead then and uh, put in the body and I'm gonna come back up towards the top where we had previously defined a database. Um, and so let me see if I can find that. If I could remember my function names, this would probably be a lot easier to do, but hey, what am I gonna do? Um, it's probably right here, build Kamer database, very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these, come down here, and so this will build out my database, and then my unknown, I will make uh, this sequence. So I'll say unknown, sequence uh, is this, and that needs to be in qu quotes because it's a string. And so then we'll have our function, which I recall saying was classify a sequence, all this, right? And so we'll do this. And so our expected um, will be a list, right? And then we'll have expected uh, taxonomy is going to be um, B and our expected confidence is going to be one. All right. Um, oh, and I've got to run everything. So I'll go ahead and rerun all this stuff. Okay. And so then we give it classify sequence, unknown sequence, this here, right? And then database DB. Great. And then we'll get this to be um, actual and then we'll do expect equal on actual and expected, okay? Save and test, it's gonna fail, of course. And so now what we wanna do is grab our function definition and we'll go ahead into Kamers. And so I'll go ahead and then paste in the function header definition and do function on that, get our curly braces going. And um, the other argument that we'd like to include in this then would be like uh, num bootstraps. We'll say that equal to 100, and then we'll do kmer size equals to eight. So let's go ahead and get these going across two lines so it's not scrolling off the right side of the screen, which is one of my pet peeves. So we're gonna go ahead and grab uh, this code down to line 45, and I'm gonna plop it in the body here, where again, we're gonna take our kmers. Um, our sequence is gonna be unknown, um, and then, right, we need to add in those other arguments, right? So like Kamer size, the default being eight, and then num 
bootstraps equals uh, 100. Uh, and I misspelled this again, bootstraps, get that going. And then our kmers will detect the kmers from our unknown sequence, good, uh, with the kmer size. And then we'll set up the vector for our bootstrap um, replicates. And then in this loop here, we'll go ahead and generate uh, the classifications, good. And then we'll output a consensus. And so I don't think I need actually this consensus variable. I think we can output it directly from the function. So I'll go ahead and save and test. All right, so it failed, of course. <laughs> uh, object DB not found. Um, so database is what I called the DB, right? So uh, I think right there is where I had database, DB, right? Go ahead and save and test again. Um, all right, so it bonked. Actual not ex equal to expected. Um, so let's see. Um, my unknown sequence was that. Um, and I'm expecting the expected taxonomy to be B, but the actual is A. Ugh, so that's such a pain. All right, so let's try this again. So if we think about our DB, we get that, and our unknown sequence is this. So let's go into our code and see if we can't trace through the code what's going wrong here, right? And so um, our unknown is unknown uh, sequence, and then uh, db or database equals db, right? And so then my kmers uh, is that. And I think the problem is that the default kmer size was eight, and I'm using three up here, right? And so maybe I need to add that here, right? So I'll do kmer size equals kmer size. Okay, let's try that and test it. Great, that passed. There isn't a lot of testing that I'm doing in here because um, everything else in there is already so well tested that I'm really not super concerned about this. I think what I would put in here down the road would be things that would test to make sure that the user gave us meaningful information, right? Um, and so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I think what I could do would be to go ahead and rough in that this is going to be an exported uh, user facing function. So we've seen this before, but we can go up to code and then insert Roxygen skeleton. And that puts that up here. Um, if I save this and I run document on that, it's gonna complain. Um, so I'm not totally worried about that at this point. We'll come back and deal with this later. Um, it'll still let me load everything and use the functions. But this will remind me that this is a user facing function. All right, so good. So now let's see how this works with our vignette. Okay, and so I will go ahead and remove these comments, right? And let's, because um, I changed some of these other values up ahead, uh, let's go ahead and reload this stuff so that we have the correct values. It might take a second because it's got to build the database and then it's got to classify my sequence. All right, so it's got an unused argument of num bootstraps equals 100. Again, this is one downside of what I was doing. Um, and again, I misspelled it. <laughs> ah. So I'll go ahead and run that, no error, and it gives um, the result. Uh, this, again, unknown sequence is the first sequence, and that happens to be what it is. It's a mycobacterium. If I were to say, uh, let's copy this down and do this um, bacteroidales, in here, this should output um, bacteroidales. And we saw before that we generated these other functions for filtering and printing things out. I'm most concerned right now with this classify sequence, okay? And so I'm going to test this to see if there are bottlenecks in classify sequence or in any of its kind of subsidiary functions that might be slowing things down. Again, when I run this, it takes a second for it to run. It's not instant, right? Like if I do if like if I do one colon ten, bam, it's fast, right? Of course, that's much simpler than what we're trying to do here with classify sequence. And so we're going to use a handy tool from a package called profviz, um, and it's called profviz, right? And so it's a lot like microbenchmark in that you can give it a function and it will then run that and it'll tell you how long it takes to run. 
I guess there's a number of differences, right? Microbenchmark will run it like a hundred or a thousand times and give you kind of like the median or mean or kind of distribution of times and it'll compare different functions to each other. Profviz is looking at um, how long it takes to run and where it spends most of the time while it's running. So this outputs um, some useful data of my code as well as kind of where it's spending time. I think if you scroll down through here, you could start to see stuff, right? So like here on line 155, it's spending a lot of time. So it took 420 milliseconds to run, like about half a second. And most of that time is spent on this line in classify BS. So if we were to um, come back up to classify BS, I bet we would see something in there, right there, right? So we're spending 400 milliseconds uh, in this step, right? And so there's no other functions that I'm calling that I've written, but what we can then see down below is that this apply function is spending a lot of time getting run, right? And so apply, we saw uh, kind of a family of apply functions that were kind of slow to run, right? And so we might think about other ways to speed this up. And so I'm bringing this up as an example because it's very easy to dive into your code without really um, knowing what you're looking for, right? Like we could kind of come up with all sorts of hypotheses and go through and test them and see no improvement in our execution times. A tool like ProfViz tells you exactly where R is spending its time in processing your data. And so what we're clearly seeing is that it's spending a lot of time in apply. And if I had to guess, it's also perhaps spending a lot of time in this prod function. We can look at the data tab up here also and click on classify sequence. And we again see that it's spending a lot of time in apply. So again, I think between apply and prod, it's spending the most amount of time. Again, prod is gonna give you the product of a vector of numbers. So if you take one through 10 and you multiply all those times each other, you get 3.6 million, right? And so we're doing that to multiply all the conditional probabilities together to get, or the, the genus specific probabilities to get the conditional probability. So this is reminding me of a problem that I forgot about, um, but somehow it didn't come up in what we're working with. So if we imagine that we have a sequence that is, let's say uh, 400 nucleotides long, that's going to have, let's just say roughly 400 uh, eight base kamers, right? Um, it's actually gonna be 393, but 400 is close enough. And we're then gonna use one eighth of those, right? So that'll be 50. So you can imagine if we had say 0 0.8 raised to the 50th power, that is a pretty small number, right? And, and 0.8 is actually pretty good, right? So imagine if it was 0.3, that's gonna be seven times 10 to the minus 27. That's a minuscule number, right? So what we might like to do instead is convert that to a log form of the number. And so this will take you back to junior high and high school. Um, I swear that I try to convince my teenagers that math is important, even though they don't think it's important, but here we are, right? So anyway, we can convert this using log uh, rules of logarithms, right? And so let me illustrate what I mean. So we could imagine having um, 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5, right? And that gets us 0.125, piece of cake, right? We could also do log of 0.5 plus the log of 0.5 uh, plus the log of 0.5, right? And that gets us negative 2.08, basically, right? But imagine if I then take that and raise it as the argument to an exponent. What do you think we're gonna get? If you said 0.125, you're right, <laughs> right? So what we can do is we can take all of our probabilities, take the log of them, and then add them together rather than multiply them. We also then don't need to do the exponent because I don't actually care about the true probability because they tend to be pretty small anyway. And really what I care about is getting the largest log sum of um, the, the cumulative probabilities, right? So let's go ahead and try that. And I think what this is going to require us to do is to come back into our KMERS where we were generating our database. Um, and let me look for our conditional. So it's gonna be in our calc genus conditional prob, right? And so here uh, we output the probability. 
So we could do this every time we're in that apply function of basically saying log on this, right? But the odds are good that we're gonna be taking the log of the same numbers over and over again. We may as well do it once in the database and then our database conditional probabilities will be log transformed conditional probabilities, okay? And so we'll go ahead and save that. And now this is going to screw up our tests. I can guarantee that. Um, and so let's look for where we're assigning or using this function in our tests, right? So here, and so here we're gonna to wanna to do log on that as the argument. And I'll go ahead and copy and paste this all down. And then we'll get the closing parentheses on these. All right, and so now let's look, see if we've got any others. That might be it. So let's go ahead and test this. I think it might still fail. Yep, it still failed. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not that good. Um, and so now if we come down to 191, I thought there was another case. Yeah, here, we also have log here. We'll get this copied down and close parentheses. Again, having this test-driven development really gives me more peace of mind that things are working the way they should. We'll go ahead and test, it might still fail. All right, um, and so now line 226, what's going on there? Um, we um, are down now into our classification stuff from the previous episode. So our database is set up right, is what this tells me, but our classification isn't ready for that, right? So if we come back to our apply, um, we're in here now, right? Again, if you think about those laws of logarithms, we already have this, but it's the logged, right? And it's a matrix where our rows are our k-mers and the columns are the genera. And so instead of the product across or down the rows within a column, what we want instead is the column sum, right? Um, so actually, I'm gonna wait on that and let's go ahead and put in sum here. I think this should pass. Good, that passed. So I wanna run this having changed prod to sum, but also having done the logarithm. I guess we're not gonna count the logarithm time because we kind of put that up into the database, um, but that's cool. And so now we'll again make sure everything is loaded. I already did that, right? And so we'll go ahead and run this. And so this gets us to 450 milliseconds. It didn't really change much to do things in log scale. But I think where it does help us is if we get longer sequences, we do run the risk of getting numbers that are just so small, so close to zero that R can't handle it. And so I think ultimately that's a much better way to do things is to be working with those log transformed values. Now, let's get away from the apply function. And fortunately, R has some nice built-in functions that will calculate like the mean and the sum across rows and columns. So we'll do call sums. And for whatever reason, they like to do camel case here where they capitalize the S. That's fine. We'll go ahead and test that. That passes, wonderful. Make sure everything is loaded. And now I'm going to reprofile this classify sequence step. And now it's down to 110 milliseconds. We cut it uh, by about 75%, the amount of time required to do this calculation. That's pretty awesome, right? Um, and we can again look and see where is it spending most of the time. Uh, and again, it's, it's in call sum, right? And so again, if we were to look for anything to shorten the amount of time it takes to process the data, it would be this call sums, um, this call sums function, right? So there is another tool that we could use to see if we can improve upon this from the R fast package. And so it's called call sums, but with lowercase. So what I'll do is come over and we'll do R fast and then call sums, okay? And I haven't imported it yet, but I do have it installed on my computer. It should work as a drop-in if I test it, it does. Go ahead and load everything first and then benchmark it. And we see that this gets us to 100 milliseconds. I'm not so confident that that's actually um, super reproducible. Um, actually, I guess if we ran this a variety of times, uh, we might see something. The, the R fast might actually be faster and I'm willing to add that. Um, I don't know that it's worth it for a dependency, although, you know, it's 10% speed up. And so, you know, when you're thinking about large numbers of sequences that we might want to classify, or if we might 
perhaps want to use a larger bootstrap value, right? So like if I said I wanted to do uh, a thousand bootstraps, let's see how long that takes. Oh, and I updated the variable, but I didn't actually update the argument, right? So let's do num bootstraps equals num bootstraps. Ah, and then let's plop these values in here as well. All right, so let's do that. So yeah, that takes about 10x the time. So um, 1160 milliseconds. So it took one second to classify one sequence with a thousand bootstraps. And this might be another way to get better resolution um, where we see that call sums spends most of its time there. Um, get consensus and table also spend some amount of time. I previously found that table was pretty slow compared to tabulate. But again, what we're finding here is that table on its own might be slow, but in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing compared to call sums, right? Um, and so I'm gonna go back to Kmers and let's go ahead and put in our fast with uh, call sums, load that, and let's do one last uh, run of our prof viz for good measure. And again, not much difference in terms of speed. In the end, I might end up removing that, but for now, let's go ahead and leave it. And let's go ahead also, and then put in here, import um, import from, and we'll say rfast, and we'll say call sums. So we'll want to use use package to add this um, rfast to our description. And I wanna find out what version of rfast we're using. So if we do package, um, version on uh, rfast, it's 2.1.0. So we'll say use package um, rfast min version equals 2.1.0. That's added. And then if we go to files and let's look back at our description, we now see that rfast is added as a dependency. Very good. And so we have now gotten our code, I think about as fast as we can get it while using base R. If there's something I might try to port over into C++, it would be this call sums function from rfast. But what I've seen in kind of looking around on the internet with various benchmarkings people do, is that this is about as fast as we're probably gonna be able to do. And so we might just be happy uh, to do this. And I think that will be pretty slick. Um, and aside from kind of blowing things up and trying a totally different approach, which you never know, might be something we do as well because we are still doing these column sums, right? And so maybe there's a better way to do this than looking at all of the column sums, right? And so I'd have to kind of think about that. We're doing all the column sums across all of the genera that we have. And so I wonder if maybe there'd be an easier way where we could perhaps remove the columns um, that don't have anything in them and then um, kind of work on a more reduced set of genera. But I'll have to think about that more. If I end up taking that approach, you'll find out about it here. So please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.